How's it going guys? I'm Brandon from Walker's Woodworks. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to go over how I made a custom bookcase using a spalted pecan slab, epoxy, and also some metal square tubing. So stay tuned, it should be a cool build. So the first step to this project is to build what's called a mold. A mold in this situation is basically a form built to keep epoxy in a particular shape while it cures. I had to make four of these. I make all my molds from 3 quarter inch melamine or plywood lined with something called sheathing tape or Tyvek tape or some of you have seen tuck tape. But I also use 100% silicone to seal all the joints so the epoxy will not leak out. When sealing the joints I clamp down the sides then pre-drill and drive screws in from the underside. Then I run a bead of silicone in all the joints and the corners, smooth out with my finger and remove any excess. This ensures that the mold is completely sealed and no epoxy will leak out. Then it was time to start working on the slabs. These are some pecan slabs that have a ton of spalting in them. They look amazing. I got them from my buddy Charles at Knothead Custom Sawing. I'll leave a link to his YouTube channel in the video description for you guys to check out. First thing I had to do with these slabs was remove all the bark and I did this with a cheap chisel and my mallet. I wanted somewhat of a square edge to reference off of, so I went ahead and trimmed the end of the slab with a pull saw. Then I just kind of laid out some lines to get an idea of the shape I wanted for the slab portion of the four shelves. I was going for a half slab, half epoxy design, but I really wanted to show some cool voids and live edges where they came together. Once I had all the shapes laid out and my cut lines, I cut everything apart with my track saw. I used a wire wheel on my drill to clean up all the live edges and finish getting rid of any bark or dirt that was left on the surface. I also have this area where there's a lot of bark kind of inset into the slab and I thought it was going to be a real pain to get it out but it actually turned out to be pretty easy with the chisel. The last step in prepping the slabs is to seal all the edges. I use the moss penetrating epoxy for this. It soaks into the wood and seals it so no air escapes while the deep pour epoxy is curing. Skipping this step could result in air bubbles in your final product. I just apply it using a cheap paintbrush and I make sure to get a nice thick layer on all the surfaces that will come in contact with the main pour. Once you apply the penetrating epoxy, allow it to fully cure before moving on. I usually do about two or three coats just to make sure everything is all sealed. I learned this the hard way, but it's really important to clamp your slabs down in the forms. Otherwise, they'll just float to the top of the epoxy and you have a lot of wasted material underneath. So if you guys haven't figured it out already, Moss Epoxies is actually the sponsor of this video, and this is their deep pour. It can be poured up to two inches thick in the right conditions. It's a three to one mix ratio, which means you use three parts resin to one part hardener. You can use it clear or add a pigment of your choice. I typically use black diamond pigments, and for this project, I used a mixture of black and silver pigment. It made kind of a nice metallic swirl when I was all done. Make sure to mix it very well for about three to five minutes. It's a slow setting epoxy, so expect to leave it sit for a minimum of 24 to 48 hours. And it's also very important to make sure your forms are level. For more information on Deep Pour and all of Moss Epoxy's products, visit their website, mossepoxies.com. And if you're into saving money, you can enter the code WALKER20 at your checkout to get 20% off your order. I'll leave the link and the code, as well as links to all the products and tools I use in this video in the video description below for you guys. 
Whenever I pour big amounts of epoxy like this, I also like to put a fan on it just to kind of dissipate some of the heat because it can get really hot, especially if your ambient temperature in your shop is over about 70 degrees. So I didn't get much footage of it, but this is actually my buddy Cody welding up the awesome frame for these shelves. It was made from 1x3 square metal tubing, and he actually TIG welded everything together. Did a great job, turned out awesome, all the joints look sweet, and I couldn't be more happy with it. Then back home it was time to prep all the metal for finish. I just used acetone to clean everything, wiped everything down really well, and then did several coats with some semi-gloss clear. Once the epoxy had all cured, I took all the shelves back down to Charles and we ran them through his big drum sander to get everything flat and level. This thing really made the process a lot easier, but I have done it with a handheld sander in the past. Back in the shop, I trimmed all the shelves down to their final size with my track saw. Then I grabbed my Rotex and sanded all the shelves to 60 grit. The sandpaper kept getting clogged with epoxy dust, so I used an old shoe to clean it out. Worked pretty well. Once I had everything fairly smooth, I went through and filled any knots or holes with the Moss Low Viscosity Epoxy. It's pretty thin, so it runs nicely into the cracks and small holes. Using my router with an 8th inch roundover bit, I put a nice roundover on all the edges of the shelves. I followed that up with some hand sanding with a 180 grit sanding sponge just to get rid of any router marks. Then it was back to sanding. So I started with the Rotex at 80 grit, then went to 120, and using a rubber stick this time that's specified for cleaning out sanding discs instead of a shoe, although it did work. Then I switched to my finishing sander and went through the grits from 120 up to 180 on the wood, and then up to 400 on the epoxy. So my go-to finish recently is the Rubio Monoco Oil Plus 2C. I use that on these shelves and that was the reason for only sanding up to 180 grit. It's an oil and hard wax blend that molecularly bonds with the wood fibers. And to do that, it needs exposed fibers to bond with, hence only going to 180 grit. Yet once it's buffed and cured, it leaves an awesome, smooth, natural finish. I found these cool plastic plugs on Amazon for the metal. I thought it looked a lot better than just an open hole. What do you guys think? Open or cast? After that was all done, I just had to drill and elongate the holes in the frame supports to allow for fastening bolts to pass through and also to allow room for wood movement. Then it was time for maybe my favorite part, add the inserts to the shelves. I started using these inserts from Rampa, and I have to say they're by far my favorite ones that I've used. They start easily, they're very beefy, and they're just all around good quality.
Putting them in the epoxy part of the shelf was a little bit trickier, but it was still pretty doable. I just drilled a little bit bigger hole so not all of the threads were digging into the epoxy. I was afraid it was gonna make it crack. But once I got them dry fitted, I just reinserted them with some five minute epoxy you'll see here in a second, and it worked out really well. Then it was time to install the shelves. I used some black bolts I also got from Rampa. They're flat head, so they blend in nicely. And I actually haven't been able to find them anywhere else in this size, so I'm really glad they had them. And with that, the shelving unit was finished. I really enjoyed the process of this build and love the final outcome. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Again, thank you to Moss Epoxies for sponsoring this build. I also wanna give a huge shout out to you guys. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch my videos, like them, share, subscribe, and just be involved. It means a lot. I'll see you guys on the next one.